Well, the 2016 boxing season is over. And 2017, the year kicks off next Friday in Florida, January 13th, a PBC on Spike card featuring Arislandi Lara, 23-2-2, versus Yuri Foreman, a name from the past, 34-2. 12 rounds for Lara's WBA junior middleweight or super welterweight title. Now, Yuri Foreman has quietly won six in a row since his losses to back-to-back uh, -to -back losses to uh, Paolo Wolak and Miguel Cotto. So, he gets a shot. Don't know what the kid has left. I mean... His knee was torn up and probably had some irreparable, without surgery, damage prior to the Miguel Cotto fight. And definitely his, his knee was just mincemeat when he fought Cotto. And uh, he got some heart though. He stayed in there. He tried, but... He couldn't go, and uh, so some years later, he's back. He's on national TV. We we'll see how how he does against Ares Landy Lara. Yuri Foreman is enrolled in the Vada Clean Boxing Program. By the way, I thought I'd mention that. And also on that card. the return of Anthony the dog Darrell as he fights some dude named Norbert <laughs> 10 rounds uh, super middleweight so Norbert he's had back to back losses to Umar Salamov and Callum Smith and He's fought at light heavyweight, and I believe he's, he's actually seen time at middleweight also. So this is a super middleweight, middleweight fight, and then the dog, Anthony Durrell, uh, he's coming off a destruction. I think it was the first round destruction of um, and it, that was in Atlantic City he fought Caleb Truex decent fighter and he's uh so yeah, we'll see how it goes I know Darrell wants to get back into the title mix and uh, by the way Anthony Darrell is enrolled in the Vada clean boxing program I thought that I would uh, add that. So that's um, Friday the 13th. <laughs> so, uh, and then a day later, January 14th in Brooklyn, New York on Showtime. We got Badu Jack, 20 wins, one loss, two draws with 12 knockouts versus James Chunky DeGale, 23 wins, one loss, 14 knockouts, 12 rounds. This is a middleweight, a super middleweight unification. The WBC and IBF unification. So um, this is this this is a good fight. This is a good fight. This is a fight people want to see. And, uh. Okay. I don't know what we got going on there, but. Anyway. <laughs> We're going to keep it rolling. So, uh. That's something that. It's a fight that. Fans want to see. And, and 
on paper, I guess it's an even matchup based on what we see, especially what we've seen as of late for both guys. And we just, we're going to see what's going on in this one early on. And I, as far as Badu Jack is concerned, I don't know if there's some kind of magic pill they have in the Mayweather gym for this guy, if you follow what I mean. But Badu Jack seems to be getting better and better with each fight. James DeGale, on the other hand, has all the talent in the world. However, sometimes he plays around and has these moments where he just kind of allows the opponents to get off, kind of makes fights closer than they should be. But in this one, he shouldn't. Now, Badu is enrolled in the Vada Clean Boxing Program. This is a unification. And I don't have clarity on this, but it, the language for the WBC slash VADA clean boxing program is that the champions, which Badu Jack is, the WBC champion, and the top 10, or excuse me, top 15 contenders must be registered. However, this is a unification. The Gale is the IBF champion. So since he's not the WBC guy, and he's not in their top 15, but instead he's the IBF's guy, the question is, does he have to use VADA to be eligible for the WBC belt? If not, I have a big problem with the language in the clean boxing program. Now, further language says that if the boxers are not enrolled, they will be unavailable to fight for any WBC affiliated title until such time as they properly enroll. So, which is it? I mean, you know, it'll be interesting to find out. Now, he's, the Gale is in another, was in another country, and there's a form of Vada that he's enrolled in. However, if that particular country that he was in, I think he's going to Miami this week, but if that particular country doesn't have what you call VADA ground troops in that country, then you have to ask yourself how stringent are the WADA people who kind of oversee. All they do is oversee. They don't do the testing. They oversee it. Um, so to speak. I mean, in other words, you leave the door open to a a USADA type situation, or a Carl Lewis, or or let me better yet, a Lance Armstrong situation where you just don't know. I mean, being in a country because there are only there are certain countries that have these VADA ground troops who are not third parties on behalf of VADA or WADA. You understand what I'm saying? So just just need some clarification there. And I'm asking that for a different reason, which I'll, I'll get to a little later in this. On that undercard, we got Jose Pedraza versus Gervonta Tank Davis. 12 rounds for Pedraza's IBF junior lightweight title. Now... Javante Davis is exciting. I mean, the guy is, there's only been one opponent that hasn't gone the distance with him. On the flip side, his opponents aren't exactly a who's who in boxing. So while there's talent, there's a lack of experience. Pedraza, on the other hand, has been with in with the dangerous Edna Cherry. He, he squeaked by in that one. He's uh, Fort Stephen Smith, who's been in there with Jason Sosa and Lee Selby. He's also fought Andre Klimov, who fought unbeaten Liam Walsh and went the distance with unbeaten Terrence Crawford and actually beat John Molina Jr. And then back in, uh, I believe it was 2010, 2012, around that time, Pedraza also stopped 
Tevin Farmer, who's found his groove. This was before Tevin found his groove. He actually stopped Tevin and before Tevin's win streak. So very interested in this one. You know, does the title come come back with Davis to the DMV? Or does Pedraza hang on to his belt? Very interesting matchup. Some notable names, uh, January 21st in Trenton, New Jersey, Zeb Judah comes back. He fights a guy named Jorge Luis Mangua. 10 rounds, welterweight. January, 20, January 28th in Las Vegas on Showtime, a good one. We've got the Jackal, Carl Frampton, 23-0, and 0, 14 knockouts. Versus Leo Santa Cruz, 32-1-1, one one, 18 knockouts. This is a rematch for Frampton's WBA featherweight title, which he took from Santa Cruz last year. I'm concerned about this one. Uh, <clears throat> this fight has robbery, <laughs> bad decision, and trilogy written all over it. Now, Frampton came to Santa Cruz's country last year, United States, and beat him and took his title. So, when the rematch was negotiated, the rematch is back in Santa Cruz's home country and even closer to Santa Cruz's home. And Look, Carl Frampton, like him or not, is a real G. And I hope if he wins, he actually wins. We don't have any shenanigans on these scorecards. If not, we'll see you for the rubber match. Now, Santa Cruz, for his credit, is registered with, watch how I say this, Vada Clean boxing program okay this is WBA this isn't WBC Frampton isn't once again he isn't however this is a WBA title belt it's a title bout not a WBC so hats off for Santa Cruz there and I bring this clean boxing up because to me, I think it's safe to say that there are well over 50% of guys out there who are doing some things that are not legal. We worry about the people who are caught. No one seems to care about drugs and, and sports, at least not in boxing. And I get it. We live in a reactive society. We'll wait for something bad to happen and then we'll care. But there's some guys out there. We got some ground troops of our own as, as journalists. We got, you know, three guys in particular. Uh, Thomas Hauser is always on top of uh, conspiracy theories, to say the least. <laughs> uh, notably, the drug game in boxing. Thomas Hauser. Um, we got Michael Montero out there probing, asking those type questions. And we got the homie, <laughs> Strictly Boxing News, no question. I mean, he's asked, he's not throwing any softballs at, at anybody. He's asking the tough questions. And they're so tough that he's not getting responses from people. And I, I find that a little head scratching if, if we're all being uh, transparent here, like, like we claim we are. So just something to... Something to always keep in mind. Thank those three gentlemen for the for the work they do. Trying to make sure that there's an even playing field in boxing. Another title fight on that undercard of Frampton Cruz and uh, Santa Cruz is uh Dewan Zlatikanin. 22 and 0, 15 knockouts. Zlat teach and in. Dewan or Dijon. It's Latichanin, excuse me. It's Latichanin. Fighting 
Mikey Garcia, 35 and 0, 29 knockouts. 12 rounds for Vlatichanin's WBC lightweight title. Now, Vlatichanin has beaten Ricky Burns, and he also stopped my man Ivan Redcatch. Though I thought the referee was a bit premature in that one. But if you've never seen him, when you, when you see Latitani fight, think of Vic Darchinian. I mean, just just that's the first thing that comes to mind, just his style. It, it, he's, he's Vic Darchinian. So it'll be interesting to see how Mikey Garcia responds to that type of style. Mikey Garcia would probably be in the top three pound for pound right now if he hadn't been off with uh, contract problems. But he's back, and uh, here's his shot at... The WBC lightweight title. You also have uh, Lee Selby versus Jonathan Victor Barros for Selby's IBF featherweight title. That same night in Indio, California on HBO, we got Francisco Vargas and Miguel Burkhelt for Vargas's WBC junior lightweight title. Burkhelt has knocked out 16 of his last 17 opponents. And Vargas is coming back from a war last June with Orlando Salido, which was the FightJournal.com's Fight of the Year in 2016 and many other websites and YouTube channels Fight of the Year. By the way, check out our other videos for Fight of the Year, Fighter of the Year, Robbery of the Year, and Knockout of the Year. Uh, Francisco Vargas is enrolled in the clean boxing program. And I don't see anything for Miguel as far as that's concerned. So, moving on. February 2nd. Mississippi, premier boxing champion on Fox Sports 1 and Fox Deportes. You got Sammy, the who can Mexican, Vasquez Jr. Vasquez is 21-1, and 1, 15 knockouts versus Louis Calazzo. He's back, 36-7. And, and 10 round welterweights. This is, you know what, this is a nice matchup. Vasquez lost to Felix Diaz in, in a step-up fight. And uh, Diaz, who was robbed in his in a decision versus Lamont Peterson, uh, excuse me, Peterson, and uh, he also fought James Keep Him Sleeping Stevenson on a Mike Tyson card before Mike Tyson got blacklisted from TV dates and boxing. And I find that a shame because and and that's that's Vasquez who fought. Um, Stevenson. It's a shame because Tyson was, he was invested not only in his fighters, but also the matchups as he understood which styles would mesh and which ones wouldn't. And he was brutally honest about it. So it's a shame he's no longer in the game because I think he had a shot. Mike Tyson, he kind of knew what he was doing. And, and I don't know if it was just word of mouth or the matchmaker himself or just Mike Tyson's uh, practice of, of that he used back in the day of watching tape, watching video, understanding fighters' habits and what good matchups were. So he, if you can go back and watch some of the shows he did, he did have some TV dates. Just when you, when you saw the press conferences and him talking about the matchups and then they would come and play out the way that he predicted it was a good thing to see, and I feel feel bad for him. It was a good situ situation for him also. Um, Vasquez's uh, opponent, last time we saw Louis Calazzo, he was paid to quit. A, I'm sorry. He retired on his stool after putting Keith Thurman in a bad situation with his body attack. So, this is not a WBC bout, 
However, Sammy the Who Can Mexican is enrolled in the clean boxing program. Louis Calazo is not, to my knowledge, and at his age, and <laughs> I, I probably wouldn't have bothered either, to be honest. February 3rd in San Juan, Puerto Rico, on Unimas. The return of Felix Verdejo as he fights Oliver Flores' 10 round lightweight bout. Same evening in Australia, Anthony Mundine, Anthony the man Mundine, 47 wins, 7 losses, 27 knockouts versus dangerous Danny Green, 35 and 5, 28. Knockouts, this is a rematch. Ten rounds, light heavyweights. Let me tell you about these guys. There's there's so much bad blood between these fighters that they had to have separate press conferences. Now, people want to talk about money people deserve and offers made by certain fighters and guys rejecting it. You got Anthony Mundine well past it. You got Danny Green well past it. But both guys got in the range of $3 million in their last fight, their initial fight with each other, I should say. And it was the most watched pay-per-view event in Australian history. So don't tell me about money and guys rejecting initial sucker price offers from other guys I'm not gonna say any more about that also in Toledo Ohio that same night so we got San Juan Puerto Rico Unimas we got the Mundine Green and Australia and then PBC on Bounce TV we got Robert Easter Jr. versus Luis Cruz 12 rounds for Easter's IBF lightweight title now, a fight of the year candidate last year, Robert Easter Jr. fought Richard Comey. It, it was about that could have went either way. And um, it went the way of the, the house fighter. But it, it, I could, you couldn't call it a robbery. However, it was um, a fight that went the way of the A side. Let's just put it that way. And Cruz has been in there with Ivan Redcatch, Edner Cherry, Jose Felix Jr., and Juan Carlos Burgos. So he's well-traveled and don't know what he has, but he has experience. So we'll see what he has on the night of February 3rd. On that undercard, Roche Warren versus uh, Zanet Zakianov. 12 rounds for Warren's WBA Bantamweight title. Warren's an exciting fighter. He, I mean, he does what Bantamweights do, and they, they punch. They bring action, so we'll see how that one plays out. February 17th, Wilmington, Delaware. This is a pay-per-view bout. Good luck. Roy Jones Jr. <laughs> I'll say it again. Roy Jones Jr. Versus... The Bare Knuckles legend, Bobby Gunn, 12 rounds, cruiserweights. Now, Jones is 64-9, mm, 46 knockouts. Bobby Gunn is 21-6-1 with 18 knockouts as a boxer. However, his bare knuckle record is awesome. This guy is 72-0 with, check this out, 72 knockouts. But you still have to ask one question. One question comes to mind about this fight. And that question is, why? The next night, February 18th, in Cincinnati on Showtime, Adrian the Problem Brona returns against Adrian Granados. It's going to be either 10 or 12 rounds. Junior welterweights. Adrian Broner better be careful. He had a win last year over Ashley Theophane. And it was good. 
it was good. You know, had his thing. He called out Floyd Mayweather Jr. and so on and so forth. There was some tension there. And uh, he's back after he got his legal problems. Uh, they disappeared, literally. So he's back. Adrian Granados, the Battle of Adrians, that's A-D-R-I-E-N, that's Broner, versus A-D-R-I-A-N, Granados. He has four losses, but those four losses are to Felix Diaz and Brad Solomon and Frankie Gomez. All were undefeated and were super prospects at the time. And he also has a draw with Kermit Centrone. And if you don't, if you think you know the name Adrian Granados, he's the guy to put a halt to the Amir Iman train, which had caught a lot of steam up to that point, and he shut it down. Now Amir Iman's come back; he he got himself a win. However, nobody saw that coming, and. Uh, so he's a guy to keep an eye on. Broner better be on his A game, which he's expected to be on. Granados, by the way, is uh, enrolled in the Vada Clean Boxing Program. This is not a WBC fight or, or a title fight. And I don't believe, well, it's not a title fight. Both of these guys may be in the the top 15 in the WBC. On the undercard, Gary Russell Jr. defends his WBC featherweight title versus Oscar Escondon. 12 rounds. Gary Russell needs to step it up this year. Moving on. Also on the undercard, 28 no, 13 knockouts, Jamel Charlo versus 26 and 1, 18 knockouts, Charles Hatley. 12 rounds for Charlo's WBC junior middleweight title. Jermel, Jermel, that's J E R M E L L, Charlo. I forgot, their, their last name is pronounced with the S H, Charlo. Charlo's enrolled with the WBC slash Vada clean boxing program. And as the WBC champion, he has to be. That's Jermel. Charles Hatley is also enrolled in the WBC slash Vada clean boxing program. This is what you want to see. Hats off to both guys. February 25th, we got a pay-per-view out of Frisco, Texas. 40 wins, 5 losses, 33 knockouts. Miguel Junito Cotto versus James, the Mandingo Warrior Kirkland. 32 and 2, 28 knockouts. 12 rounds. Junior middleweights. Miguel Cotto hasn't fought in over a year since losing to Saul Canelo Alvarez in November of 2015. Prior to that, he stopped a weight-drained Daniel Gill. Kirkland is also coming off of a loss to Saul Canelo Alvarez. His was a knockout loss in May of 2015. So he's been off even longer. Interesting fight. Everybody's talking about the Ann Wolf factor. I'm not sure. I, I, I think that Kirkland will bring the entertainment and who knows? Who knows? I, I just... I saw slurred speech prior to the Alvarez fight. I don't know. I just don't know. Physically, I, I don't know. But Ann Wolf will have him ready, for sure. Nothing's impossible. On that undercard, on the pay-per-view, Guillermo Rigondeaux. Versus Moises Flores, 12 rounds for Rigo's WBA Junior Featherweight title. The last time we saw Rigo, or didn't see him, <laughs> he fought a guy named James Dickens. All right. Hmm. 
that night at also at Birmingham, Alabama, PBC on Fox. Deontay Wilder returns, 36 and 0. Excuse me, 37 and 0, 36 knockout versus Andre Warzik. 33 and 1, 19 knockouts. 12 rounds for Wilder's WBC heavyweight title. Wilder is enrolled in the WBC slash VADA clean boxing program and has been. Orzik has been in with Franz Botha and Danny Williams. Two named fighters. However, it was the 46-year-old version of Botha and the 41-year-old version of Williams. His only loss is to Alexander Povetkin, speaking of clean boxing. So, it'll be interesting to see what happens next, including the litigation, dealing with Povetkin and Wilder and so on and so forth. Should Wilder win? Of course, someone will look at the result of this and somehow draw a comparison between Povetkin and Wilder. Both of these guys are reg registered with the clean boxing program as this is a WBC title fight. This is what you want to see. Hats off to Deontay. Hats off to Warzik. On the undercard, we got Dominique Brazil versus Arthur Spilka. 10 rounds heavyweights. This is a good comeback fight for Brazil after his loss to Anthony Joshua. This is also a good comeback fight for Spilka after his knockout loss to Wilder. It's a good matchup to see what each guy is made of. I hope they televise this one. Um, of course, someone will look at the result of this and somehow draw a comparison between Joshua and Wilder. Good matchup. And I think even a better matchup is the third fight, which I'm assuming all three of these are going to be televised. We got Travis Kaufman, 31 and 1, 23 knockouts, versus Amir Mansour, 22, 2 and 1, 16 knockouts, 10 round heavyweights. I, I look at this as a great matchup. I, I just hope it's televised. and I, This has the potential to be a, a very explosive fight. March 4th. New York. New York. On Showtime. We got Keith one-time Thurman. 27-0. 22 knockouts versus Danny Swift Garcia. 33-0. 19 knockouts. This is a unification bout. A welterweight unification belt. Thurman's WBC, excuse me, Thurman's WBA belt, Garcia's WBC belt. Now Thurman fought once last year and won a controversial decision over Sean Porter that many people, especially those who watched the fight live, judging by the boos that you heard, thought that Sean Porter won. Garcia, on the other hand, beat Robert Guerrero in January of last year and then Samuel Vargas in November in uh, Philadelphia. This is a fight everyone wants to see. Danny Garcia is enrolled in the WBC slash VADA Clean Boxing Act. Here's another case. Since Thurman is the WBC guy, the WBA guy, and not WBC ranked and not registered in the clean boxing program to our knowledge is there language that says he's not eligible to win the WBC belt that's the question that's where we're trying to get some some clarity on and some clarification if he doesn't have if if he does not have to register and he wins and wins both belts. I have a problem with the language, which once again states 
If the boxers are not enrolled, they will be unavailable to fight for any WBC affiliated title until such time as they properly enroll. So he can't, it's like you can't do it afterwards. I would assume if he doesn't do it and wins, the title becomes vacant. I don't know. Word, word is out on the street. We're trying to see if we can get the streets to answer. Also, the hammer. Erickson Lubin, 17-0, and 12 knockouts. Prospect fighting George Cota, or Jorge, 25-1, and 1, 22 knockouts. WBC junior middleweight eliminator, or super welterweight. Lubin is a prospect high on everybody's radar. I think he's a little too high at the moment, but he, nevertheless, a very good-looking prospect. Uh, neither guy has fought anyone I care to mention. The, the WBC, okay, I'm confused. The WBC has Lubin rated number five and Coda rated number eight, right? Follow me. When I look at the world ratings for super welterweights or light middleweights, or junior middleweights, same thing. I see Lubin is ranked number 13 in the world for the world ratings, right? Number 5 WBC, number 13 in the world, number 9 US. And I can't find Coda anywhere. I mean, if you go to Box Rec or elsewhere and find his world rating, come see me. I mean, I can't find it anywhere. I go on box rec, okay, didn't see him in the top 20, go to the next page, didn't see him in the top 40, not in the top 60, not in the top 80, not in the top 100, I mean nothing. So Cole has also fought at welterweight, so I looked there, nothing, then I looked at middleweight, because his one loss was against a hard-hitting Marco Antonio Rubio. I don't see a world ranking there either. But he's number eight in the WBC. Hmm. So this has a setup fight for Lubin written all over it. Now, both are Vada, Vada enrolled, which is cool. But... Without any ranking, it, I, I mean, Coda is going to pass those tests that Vada gives him, right? <laughs> anyway, in London, the same night, we got Tony Bellew, 28-2, 18 knockouts versus David Hay, 28-2, 26 knockouts, 12 rounds, heavyweights. At last, we saw Bellew stop, last time out, BJ Flores. David Hay fought twice in 2016. He fought a guy named Mark and a guy named Arnold. <laughs> One guy he didn't fight was a guy named Shannon. So that was that game he ran on, that con game he ran on Shannon Briggs, who if I was Shannon, I'd show up at this fight and just cause some drama just because of the way David Hay played him. Oh, by the way, Tony Bellew is Vada certified. I don't see anything on David Hay. Take it for what it's worth, folks. March 18th, pay-per-view, New York. We have a title fight. In one corner, we got the pseudo-challenger. Daniel, the Miracle Man, Jacobs. And in the other, other corner, he's need no introduction. Gennady, Triple G Golovkin. This is for Golovkin's WBA, WBC, IBF middleweight titles. I think he has an IBO too or something like that. Great matchup. Great matchup. This is probably a 60-40 matchup. Golovkin's favorite at this point in their careers. At this point in their careers. At this point in their careers. It's probably a 60-40 matchup. 
Golovkin no longer in his physical prime, getting up there, Daniel is right where he needs to be. The house will be packed in this one. I mean, the atmosphere is going to be electric. And if they can add the Chocolatito Gonzalez versus Carlos Cuadras rematch to this, you got a heck of a pay-per-view. If they could also add Irish Shawnee Monahan versus Joe Smith Jr., both New Yorkers, and uh, Shawnee being Irish and being St. Patrick's, you got yourself a hell of a pay-per-view. It's just a great fight because it's St. Saint Patty's Day weekend and you put the Irish fighter on the card, it'll be crazy. Gennady Golovkin is registered with the VADA clean boxing program and has been. So there goes the theory out of the window along with bogus hand wrapping issues. I mean, people were... Golovkin, he, he's been with VADA for a while, so... People who were making up conspiracy things about first it was hand wrapping, then it is it is this guy getting tested? That theories out; those theories are out of the window. Another thing about Golovkin, I mean, we look at Rigo and Errol Spence Jr., and, and all I hear is people talking about why are these guys being ducked? People are ducking them. Then we look at Golovkin, and we accuse him of ducking big fights. It's like it, people kill me with that. And then if he beats Danny Jacobs, then they'll say Danny was never any good. Even though the guy has 14 knockouts in his last 15 fights. I mean, give me a break. On April 8th, Joseph Parker, 22-0, 18 knockouts versus TBA. 12 rounds for Parker's WBO heavyweight title. Now, Rumors have swirled from any, everyone from Huey Fury to Jarrell Miller to David Price. So we'll see. We'll see. And also, a big one. Also on April 8th. It's a pay-per-view. You're going to love this one, guys. This is a potential fight of the year candidate. April 8th in Atlantic City, New Jersey. We have... Marvin Hagler Jr. versus Ray Leonard Jr. Cruiserweights. Richard Steele will be the referee just as he was for the Hagler Leonard fight back in the 80s, which Marvin Hagler won, by the way. Uh, I don't care what the cards say. Fight of the Year candidate here. Hagler Jr., Leonard Jr., Atlantic City, April 8th. Make sure you be there, folks. Make sure you are there. <laughs> April 29th, Anthony Joshua, 18 and 0, 18 knockouts versus Vladimir Klitschko, 64 and 4, 53 knockouts, 12 rounds for Joshua's IBF and I believe for the vacant WBA title. This fight right here is going to tell a story. That's all I'll say. Is Joshua the real deal at this point or will the old man be too much for him? gotta love it that same night Adonis Superman Stevenson 28 1 23 knockouts versus TBA 12 rounds for Stevenson's WBA light heavyweight title Stevenson has reg registered with Vada for his next fight for this fight he more than likely will face a leader Alvarez if the WBC follows its own rules. Alvarez is 21 and 0, 10 knockouts. Alvarez is enrolled also with the clean boxing program. I don't know. Adonis rarely fights outside of Canada. I don't know about the ground troops, the Vada ground troops in Canada. I don't know if it's the same situation as as it was for Chunky DeGale. Um, gotta have faith. So, we'll see. We'll see. I think Alvarez is a decent matchup for Stevenson. Stevenson's been protected. And uh, we'll see how that plays out. Alvarez doesn't have a lot of knockouts, but 
And I think the guy that's going to get Stevenson is a guy that's going to hurt him. Uh, hopefully that day is going to come soon where he's in there with a, uh, someone who's just going to bring it. So we'll see. Or someone who can at least take away his left hand and, and box his ears off. So there you have it. Uh, it's a promising first quarter of plus a couple of months after the uh, one month after the first quarter. So January, January, February, March being the first quarter and then April being the first month into the second quarter all the way up until the 29th. We got some good ones. We got some very, very good ones. We got some so-so. We got some decent ones and then we got some other ones that you're not going to write home to mom about. But it's a good start. It's a good start. So from January, January is good. February is good, which it hasn't been. February not, no. That, that's pretty cool. March is decent. And April is decent. So you um make sure you take those dates down and, and, and get out there, watch the fights, go to the fights if you can. And uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel, The Fight Journal. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at The Fight Journal. We got close to 12,000 followers there. We're trying to get more subscriptions on our YouTube channel. We're going to be giving away some money, some prizes, so you definitely want to subscribe. And check out our website, thefightjournal.com. If you see a blue and white screen, go to the bottom and select view full site because you are you are in mobile phone mode. And Type your email address in the box and all of our videos, our audio, our interviews, articles, what have you, will come directly to your email once they're posted on the site. You won't have to come to the site again unless you want to. We catch you on the next one.